Welcome to statistics class. This is our lesson, probability and probability distribution, specifically the topic of probability. So let's define some terms. First, probability. It is a numerical value ranging from 0 to 1. Again, ranging from 0 to 1 that measures the likelihood of an event occurring. There are three basic interpretations of probability. We can have a priori approach, we can have a posteriori approach, or a subjective approach. So a priori approach, some call it as a classical approach or classical probability. It utilizes an experimental model whose underlying assumptions are used to measure the likelihood of an event. So the assumptions are conditions and the likelihood of an event, example, equally likely or an equally likely event. For example, in equally likely events, when I toss a coin, the head can have the same chance or can have the same likelihood as of the tail. So this is the example of equally likely. And a priori approach, let's consider a random experiment with the assumption of an equally likely sample space. Then the probability of an event E denoted as P, open square bracket E, close square bracket or p open close parenthesis e is defined as probability of e is equal to the number of elements of event e over the total number of possible outcomes of the random experiment or the total number of your sample space so that's how we compute for the probability under the a priori approach. And then consider a random experiment with the assumption of an equally likely sample space. Then the probability of event E denoted again as probability of E open and close square bracket or P open close parenthesis is defined as the probability of E, summation of the probability of Wij, where Wj, Wj, where Wj is an element of an event E. And it is equal to the summation of the probability of J, where Wj is an element of E, where P, P, W, J, or P, J is the probability of the Jth element of the event. So later we will have an example for that. So find the probability of getting a block 10 when drawing a card from a deck. So solution, reminders that there are 52 cards in a deck. And there are two blocks, 10 the 10 of spades and the 10 of clubs. Hence, the probability of getting a block is, reminder that it's a compound event. So the probability of block 10 is equal to, take note of this formula under the a priori approach, the number of, the number of elements in the event E over the total number of sample space. So our total sample space is 52. And the number of events of the 10 blocks in a deck, we have the 10 of spades and the 10 of clubs, there are only two. So for computing the probability of this event, we can have the 2 over 52 or equal to 1 over 26. So the question, the probability of getting a block 10 when drawing a card from a deck is equal to 1 over 26. And then probabilities can be expressed as fractions, decimals, or where appropriate, percentages. So whenever you are asked what is the probability of getting a head when a coin is tossed, typical responses can be any of the following three. You can respond one half, 0.5, or you can respond 50% probability. 
So now let's proceed to the second approach, a posteriori approach, or some call it as an empirical probability. So it utilizes the relative frequency of the occurrence of an event in repeated trials of the random experiment as the probability of the event. So in other words, the probability of event E is equal to the number of occurrences of event E over the number of trials. In other words, this is an actual data of a certain event. So for example, suppose that a researcher for the American Automobile Association, triple A, ask 50 people who plan to travel over the Thanksgiving holiday how they will get to their destination. So the results can be categorized in a frequency distribution is shown. So for some, they can have driving, they will drive, and then there will be 41 people who will do that or fly. They are, the frequency is 6. The train or bus, the frequency is 3. So in a total of 50. So now, probabilities can be computed for various categories. For example, the probability of selecting a person who is driving is 41 over 50. Since 41 out of the 50 people said that they were driving, the difference between, reminder that the difference between the classical and the empirical probability is that the classical probability assumes that certain outcomes are equally likely. So it's a real outcome, so such as the outcome when a die is rolled. So while empirical, Probability relies on actual experience to determine the likelihood of outcomes. In empirical probability, one might actually roll a given die 6,000 times, observe the various frequency, and use this frequency to determine the probability of an outcome. So it's a real or past data. They are using the past data or the past results of an experiment in computing for a probability. So this is the posteriori approach from the word itself, uh, posteriori. So let's now proceed to a subjective approach. So when you say subjective, so subjective probability uses a probability value based on an educated guess or estimates employing opinions and in exact information. So subjective probability refers to the probability of something happening based on an individual's own experience or personal subject. So in other words, a subjective probability is not based on market data or historical information and differs from one person to another. So it utilizes one's personal judgment and knowledge in assessing how likely an event will occur. And subjective probability refers to the probability of something happening based on an individual's own experience or personal judgment from the word itself, subjective. So it varies from person to person. So for example, an individual is asked the probability of a dice roll yielding a six the individual looks at the past three rows and notes that six came up in all instances. So the individual believes that the probability of the next dice roll yielding a six is at 30%, although the mathematical prediction is incorrect. The probability is 67.67%. And the individual's personal experience of the dice roll yielding six in three instances created a situation where he used subjective probability. So it's just a personal judgment, personal observation. So this is an example of subjective approach. So let's take note of the properties of the probability of an event E. So number one, it is always between zero and one. So in other words, the probability of E is less than or equal to zero is greater than or equal to zero but less than or equal to one 
So for a random experiment with sample space S, the probability of your sample space is always equal to 1. Okay? So if the event 1, event 2, event 3, so on until event n are mutually disjoint events in sample space, then the probability of E union just looks like a letter U. Union E2, union until En is equal to the probability of event 1 plus the probability of event 2 plus or until the probability of event N. So that is the properties of probability of an event E. Now let's consider a special types of events. Given the probability of an event E, the probability of E, we say that E is a sure event if the probability of E is equal to 1. And it is an impossible event if P, probability of E, is equal to 0. Take note that null and impossible event have different sets. So better study that in your probability subject. And then we have these event relations that's defined some terms, complementary events. So when you say complementary events is the set of all outcomes in the sample space S, denoted by S, not in E is referred to as the complement of event E, denoted by E, and then this like a power C. So this is the complementary events, E, C. And also for mutually exclusive events, two events E1 and E2 are said to be mutually exclusive if they have no common element. Thus, they cannot happen simultaneously. So in this Venn diagram, we can see here this is our sample space, our universe. So this is the event E and then this event uh, E2. So the intersection is a null event. So just like, for example, in a gender, so I can only be a girl and a girl cannot be a boy. So they cannot happen simultaneously. So these are just an example of a mutually exclusive events. And this is, this is also a characteristic of a nominal. Remember in your levels of measurement, they are mutually exclusive events. And then independent events. So for example, for the two events E1 and event E2 are independent if the likelihood of the occurrence E1 is not affected with the occurrence of the E2. So for example, if I flip a coin in the air and get the outcome as head, then again I toss it and I flip the coin, but this time in the second toes, I get the outcome as tail. So in both cases, the occurrence of both events is independent of each other. So my first toes is independent to my second toes of a coin. So this is an example of an independent event. And then another one is the combined events. So events may be combined to form other events defined in sample space. It may also be of interest to measure how likely these combined events may occur. So, union of events. So, the union of two events consists of the following. So, elements of E1 but not in E2. So, consider this Venn diagram. So, this illustration, this, uh, this is our universe, our sample space. And then this area, the dark blue shaded area, these are the elements of E or event E1, but not in E2. And then elements of E2, but not in E1. So this white shaded area is the elements of E2, but not in E1. And then the elements of both E1 and E2, these are the shaded or dark shaded area. So this is, their, this is the elements common to both E1 
and event two. So if whenever you see this letter U, looks like letter U, so event one, union event two is equal to our sample space. And then another term, we have the intersection of events. So the intersection of two events consists of elements found in both E1 and E2. So observing the intersection of two events implies the simultaneous occurrence of the two events. So in this diagram, we can see here the block shaded area. This is the intersection of two events of E1 and E2. That means they are common or common in both sides or in both events. So you can see here the inverted U looks like the inverted U. This is the intersection. So this you can read this as the intersection of event one and event two. Be reminded on the operations on probability. So the probability of a complement of an event E is computed as the probability of E complement is equal to 1 minus the probability of event E. And then for the addition rule, given events E1 and E2 in sample space, the probability of E1 union E2 is equal to the probability of E1 plus the probability of E2 minus the probability of E1 intersection E2. So there is a uh, deduction of the intersection because there will be redundancy or double counting of probabilities. That's why uh, the in one intersection of the event E1 and E2 is being deducted in computation for the probability of event E1 union E2. But in a special case, if E1 and E2 are mutually exclusive events, then the probability of E1 union E2 is equal to the probability of E1 plus the probability of E2. Now let's proceed to the conditional probability. The conditional probability of event 1 given E2 is defined mathematically as the probability of E1 given, so this looks like a slush, um, given E2 is equal to the probability of the intersection of E1 and E2 divided by the probability of E2. Take note that the probability of E2 must be greater than zero unless the probability would become zero so where e2 is referred to as the conditioning event so this e2 is the conditioning event so remember the different approaches to computing the probability so they are using the previous or prior data or probability so e2 referred to as the conditioning event And then we can have this multiplication rule. Given events E1 and E2 in sample space, the intersection of E1 and E2, the probability of the intersection of E1 and E2 is equal to the probability of E1 given E2 multiplied to the probability of the conditioning event or the probability of E2 rather. So special case, if E1 and E2 are independent events, then the intersection or the probability of the intersection of E1 and E2 is equal to the probability of E1 multiplied to the probability of E2. Same thing, if you can have a series of intersection E1, E2, E3, 2, En, then you can also have the series of multiplication of Probability of E1, probability of E2, probability multiplied to probability of E2, multiplied to probability of E3 until probability of En. So that is the multiplication rule on the operations on probability. So, my dear students, we experience different union of events, but there is no greater union of events than we can have 
Example, event one, we have Jesus Christ in our lives. Event two, we have the uh, human and then Holy Spirit because the union is we bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So the union between Christ and his people is to be living true and unfailing, resembling the union that exists between the Father and the Son. This union is the fruit of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Remember this, if we have this union of events of Jesus Christ and our Holy Spirit, then we bear the fruit of brotherly love to each other. So for our next topic, we will tackle about the fundamental principle of counting. God bless you.